Hello everybody and welcome. Today we're going to go over Sarah Boone's plea deal and why did she reject it? Are you crazy? What's going on in that mind of yours, Sarah? If you're new to this channel, welcome. Please don't forget to subscribe if you like our content. And if you're returning, welcome back. Don't forget to leave your comment on the comment section. Like, share, subscribe. Every time I read your comment, it really helps me to grow and to learn and to be able to tweak all the content so that you guys can have a better experience. So today we're going to check this video here of Sarah. Uh, facing the the interrogation moment when they tell her they have a video on her sarah goes to the interrogation the next day that george has died and she doesn't know about this video maybe she was drunk maybe she was in a blackout she doesn't remember that she recorded the video showing the moment that george is bleeding for his life and he cannot breathe uh so the the interrogators are going to show it to her and we're going to check her reaction real quick. Um, so I have something that I want to show you that we found. I got it. Um, oh, I got and it was from your phone. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? If you need to move it around, go ahead. <laughs> No, I don't remember that. For everything you've done to me. For everything you've done to me. For everything you've done to me, right? So here in the first second that she's faced with this video, what would a normal person do? Holy crap, they have this evidence on me. Uh, I am just there watching him in a suitcase and stop right here. I want an attorney, like look at the, the amount of trouble that I'm in. But no, Sarah's reaction is like, oh, your battery's gonna die? Like, can we watch this little movie? Uh, because your your battery's about to die. That's what I'm concerned about. And it is incredible that she's not like jumping up and down here. She's just saying, no, I don't remember this video. So what does that mean? That you don't remember, therefore it doesn't exist? So, okay, she's gonna go get the cable. I... unfortunately those words unfortunately for sarah those words for everything you've done to me it shows some type of intent right it shows that i'm doing this i'm aware that i'm doing this that i'm leaving you in the suitcase for everything you've done to me so that's not good for her Okay. I don't want to see it. That's okay. She's like, I don't want to see it. Well, it's on your phone. That's not how and it works. You can but then the detective's like, well, it's on your phone. Okay. That's not how it works either, detective. But anyways, the main point of this whole interrogation, I believe it was for them to try to pin Sarah for first degree murder to show that she premeditated, that she had intent, that she did it on purpose, that it wasn't like a negligent thing or, or an accident. Uh, homicide, right? Um, um, homicide, meaning the death uh, by the hands of another is what she's being charged with, but she's being charged with second degree, not first degree. Now the plea deal that is extremely favorable to her given the amount of evidence that exists against her was a lesser charge which was manslaughter sarah rejects the deal which is absolutely insane if it was any other case if this video didn't exist if her interrogation didn't exist sure maybe but there is so much evidence against sarah that this is a tight case it's like almost guaranteed that she's going to be convicted in my observing mind from looking at the outside looking at the interrogation we have covered the interrogation in full it's almost two hours but we broke it down in like four separate videos so if you want to check that i'll go to the cerebrum playlist in this channel and you're going to look at the entire interrogation 
the detectives are going to, they're showing her, here's what you did. It's in, it's in on, it's on camera. Here's what you did. And she still rejects the plea. She says, no, I can, what is she thinking? I can get away with this. Uh, they're not gonna, she thinks the jury is not going to convict her. Is that what she's thinking? Because if she thinks the jury is not going to convict her after watching the video, after watching her police interrogation, she's got another thing coming. She's going to be looking at, uh, life in prison. Let me check. Uh, second degree murder. Okay, so here is the second degree murder. Uh, punishment information in Florida. This is where she's at. Uh, the punishment, uh, the punishment, the punishment for second degree murder in Florida is a minimum of 16.75 years in prison and a maximum of life in prison. So the judge would have to give her at least 16.75. I believe she has served four years already. Uh, they usually give that as a credit for time served, but still, this is a minimum sentence. Second degree murder is a first degree felony in Florida, and it is assigned a level 10 offense severity ranking. However, the sentence can be influenced by several factors, including aggravating factors. Uh, these include the use of a weapon, vulnerability of the victim, look at that, or the presence of children. For example, if a firearm is used, the minimum sentence increases to 25 years, okay? So in this case, already the judge may look at the vulnerability of the victim because George was inside of a suitcase. He wasn't posing any Im imminent threat to her and he couldn't defend himself, right? So maybe that's going to be something that increases this minimum of 16.75 years uh, to at least 25. Mitigating factors, this include a lack of prior criminal history, which she does have a criminal history. She has been arrested for domestic violence in the past, from my understanding. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you guys know anything else about her criminal history, but that's what I know. Mental illness or evidence of remorse. I haven't seen any mental illness allegations, okay? Although she could very well at this time uh, classify herself as an alcoholic, say she has a, an alcoholic addiction, that is a disease, and she could come to her, like she could really experience some remorse at this time saying, listen, I have had time to think about this. I have looked at my past. I am truly remorseful. I do believe I have an alcohol addiction problem. I need to seek treatment. I need help. But is Sarah doing any of that? No, Sarah maintains that she's going to talk her way out of this like she did in the interrogation. I don't understand what's going on in her mind. So maybe there is a mental illness or evidence of remorse, which she has not displayed. I don't believe she has displayed remorse. During the interrogation, a lot of times she was going back to herself like, oh yeah, George died, but this has affected me. I can't sleep. What am I supposed to do? How am I going to live with this in my life? So it's all about her. She keeps going back to how this tragedy is affecting her. And we have a video uh, on this channel, I believe it's called Narcissist Me or something like that, that it shows all the traits that Sarah has displayed through her own words during the interrogation that would classify most people as a narcissist having the narcissistic personality disorder because she keeps going back to her and she has not shown during that interrogation at least true remorse for the loss of life of George. One of the first questions she asks when she has an opportunity to ask questions to the detective is, what about his wedding ring? Like, how am I going to get that back? I paid for it. Am I going to get that back? Who thinks like that? When you lose someone that you truly love and that you deeply care for, are you really thinking about the wedding ring or the jewelry or the money? You're thinking about how you're going to live when your whole life has been 
your everything your foundation has been taken away from you at least that's how i felt when i lost my mom in a tragic way it was sudden it was unexpected and i felt like my world had collapsed was i thinking about the ring or this or that no way so the lack of remorse is something that might actually uh be another mitigating factor in her case and i don't think she has the awareness of what other people view this case as i don't know if she thinks she's a superstar and that she's going to have her 15 minutes of fame and people are going to be on her side but it's really looking bad for her to get a not guilty uh conviction here um uh, jury decision here criminal history could also be affected prior convictions especially for violent crimes can lead to harsher penalties if the prosecutor intends to seek the death penalty, they must give notice to the defendant and file it with the court within 45 days after arraignment. Okay, so that would be the second degree murder, right? So going back to this police interview where she is being faced with the evidence, the hard evidence, and her new attorney, Mr. Owens, did try to keep this interrogation out of the trial. He did the best he could with what he has been given, but it's going in this this video is coming in so let's hear sarah's reaction when the victim george torres was pleading for his life here either explain it or we take it for what it is yeah we're just trying to give you the opportunity to tell us what's going on that's it <laughs> it's that long so you hear george saying sarah and she's concerned about how long the video is Wow. That's you. Wow. She says, F you, F you, stupid. So she definitely sounds drunk, but doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. Even if you're an alcoholic and even if you suffer with addiction, if you have a blackout, something inside her allowed her to go that far. And that is not what normal people do um the fact that she is responding to him with such cruelty and such a callous attitude uh is very very harmful to her case and it's very sad that's my name that's don't my name don't wear it out I couldn't hear what she said. He said, I can't effing breathe. And she said, what? After, I don't know what she said there. Uh, let me see if I can go back a few seconds. Uh, right here. Later, it splits over. You said that you put him in the suitcase. <laughs> you, your voice. Stupid. I couldn't hear it either. I don't want to watch it, please. I don't want to watch it. It's not how it works, Sarah, last, babe. Last time we talked to you, you said that you put him in the suitcase, you had two fingers hanging out. I flipped him over. I flipped him over. I flipped him over, and that's where it was. There's two different videos and a still picture where, yeah, it shows you flipping him in different positions. And him saying that he can't breathe, and you saying fuck. So this is upside down. So in order for him to have gotten into it, it was flipped up. Right. It was flipped up normal. Yeah. Like as if you're packing something. So this is upside down. Guys, this is killing me right now. So this. So is this is killing down. her right now, right? But she literally killed somebody, and that's how she responds to it. It's the lack of self awareness that is evident in her case, and I believe that even after four years of the incident even after she has been uh in jail for this long she has had so much time to reflect 
she still lacks the self-awareness. Why? Because she rejected the deal on October 7th, the day that the trial was supposed to start, right? Because the state is trying to find a resolution to, to this case. We have been waiting on this case for about four years, um, for about four years, yes. Uh, and, you know, there's the taxpayer money, there's the, the jury time, there's the judge, there's the attorneys, there's all the court appointed attorneys that were trying to, to serve in this case and that didn't work out for some reason or another. And they're trying to give it uh, to provide a resolution. So they offer her man's man's law to charge if she pleads guilty and she said no so let's take a look at how that went down because that was impressive to me if there was ever a plea i know prison and jail is awful for anybody but if there was ever a time to really really consider it and say yes it, it's this one wait 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 i have to share this okay here you go so the judge said, do you understand? We were to proceed to trial on this matter. And if you were found guilty, the lowest permissible sentence that the court could levy in this case would be 22.5 years in the Department of Corrections. Do you understand that? Do you understand this? Okay, so do you understand that? She says, yes. So let's take a look at this again. 22 year, 22.5 years is what he said, but it's uh, 16, it says 16.75. So maybe they are uh, taking into account some of the mitigating factors uh, because we have here the, incre the increased sentence to 25. So in her case, 22.5 is what the judge is saying. So let's go back. The state's offer to resolve this case. Do you understand the state's offer to resolve this case? Yes. Do you? Do you really, Sarah? Sarah, look at me. Do you really understand the state's offer to settle this, to resolve this case? Sarah, do you understand the plea offer they're giving you as opposed to the evidence they have against you? Do you understand? No, you don't. And the attorney's like, Sarah, 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 the offer is the best you're going to get, Sarah. Wake the heck up, Sarah. Listen, I can't perform miracles, Sarah. Take the dang plea. And she's like, no, no, I got this. I am going to be declared not guilty because of everything. He's done to me. Sarah, take the offer. 15 years to a lesser included charge. Of what is in this mind? She has a little bit of the lip pursing going on, like, which is like disagreements. Why? Okay, so you disagree. It's normal for your body to disagree with this position, with the with any any type of sentence. But do you realize the position you're in? It's the self awareness. You need some self awareness, and unfortunately, apparently, the way she's gonna get that is going to be being convicted, getting the the maximum or the minimum sentence, whatever the judge decides to do, and. It's so sad that you see somebody and that everybody can see, listen, this is the best offer you could get. And she still rejects it. Manslaughter, with the understanding that she would serve 85% of that sentence. That's up to the department and her behavior, but that is my understanding. 15 years is the offer. Manslaughter, the charge lesser included. And if she serves... What did he say? 75, 85% with good behavior. She could get out. I mean, she has this, uh, a young son. She has a young son that if she only had a few more years to, to do, she could definitely go and live a normal life and enjoy her son. But if she says no, she's looking at 22.5 to life in prison. And then she wouldn't even have the opportunity to 
to enjoy her son, you know? So let's take a look at, uh, oh, it's 85%. Let's take a look at this. So in Florida, all state prisoners must serve at least 85% of their sentence, including those convicted of manslaughter. So this is Florida statute 944.275. This statute has been in place since 1995 and requires that all state prisoners serve at least 85% of their sentence. So that will be about what, 12.75 years minus the four. She'll be looking at eight years about, I believe. Uh, but this is all, of course, depending on uh, good behavior, like it says here uh awarded for good behavior working training and other constructive activities not all inmates qualify for game time and the amount of game time an inmate receives is outside of control the trial is up to the the the, the, the prison like they were saying manslaughter is a second degree felony in florida with a minimum sentence of 9.25 years in prison a maximum of 15 years uh, and the state is giving her the maximum here, but that's, you know, lesser than a second degree murder. Other penalties include probation, fines suspended, suspended or revoked, driver's license. So let's go back to Sarah and her decision making face here. Ma'am, understanding the state's offer, do you wish to accept or reject the state's offer? What are you thinking right now? She's looking down. Then she looks at the judge, understanding the offer. Offer to resolve this case. Reject. What? <laughs> Let me see if I can get just the reject. Look at that. Uh, I don't know if I see a little bit of anger here because, you know, her nostrils are flaring a little bit. Uh, this side of the mouth, the way that she is responding to that, maybe uh, I feel like she's being a little, let's do this in slow motion. Uh, I feel like that she may, may be showing a defiant, a defiant uh, semblance here. This case. Yes. You see a little bit of the defiance and the anger. Um, I don't know who who talks to her, if she has any friends, if she has any people advising her, but absolutely the wrong decision. I am all, I am all, in my opinion, guys, because the evidence against her is, is a lot. So going back to the evidence here, let's see the video again and what else they confront Sarah with. And then this small video, that occurred 11 minutes later it's flipped over the other way closer to your dining room table okay now he's obviously still in there so he didn't how did that how did it go from the back to the front i flipped it okay my plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep <laughs> Well, that's what you did, yeah. but not intentional. Though. It doesn't matter your plan and it doesn't matter if it was intentional or not. You don't put somebody in a suitcase. You don't flip the suitcase. You don't close the suitcase. You don't do anything like that. No, you told me you went upstairs because what? You were Stop getting here. ready for bed. Stop She's here. Like, Stop okay, here. here. Show me where you can see any fingers coming out because there's it's, the end. It's and his head's right here. Mm -hmm. uh, so going like this, Rather than going all the way up, it's like this. But why is he saying I can't breathe and why is he pushing on it as if he can't get out? And it doesn't show a hole. You, there's no okay. hole. There's no fingers. I don't see his fingers. There's no hole. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, I don't know like what you want me to what? tell you. I'm just showing you. I'm just telling you what we see and what we've heard from the other I video. Understand. I understand. No, you don't. He's begging to let for you to let him out. Four years later, you, know? you don't understand, Sarah. You're laughing in the beginning, and then in the end, it sounds kind of like a no. It's not malicious. Well, same. Whoa. It's not malicious. Then Just, what is that? What does mean to you? Well, like if you were to, if I were to tell my oh, like he does, like. I get told everything but a white woman. Like he so. does. So then we go like, to the the blaming, the shift, you know. 
And this is what we have in the video that, that we're pointing out her narcissistic personality traits. Uh, it's just unbelievable. She shifts the blame to the victim, the guy that she just killed a day ago when she's being confronted with a fact. And that is something that narcissists narcissists do a lot because they have a very shallow sense of self and a very fragile ego even though they might think they're the best in the world deep down inside they have a hole and they know they don't have that sense of self so when somebody confronts them with a defect or an accusation or some wrongdoing that hurts their ego so much because it doesn't align with what they believe they are right she's this great person she's a straight-a student she's an excellent mother she's an outstanding this those are her own words about herself so when you confront her with the fact that she was cruel and that she committed this uh outrageous thing against george and she was callous by leaving him there despite him pleading for his life her response instead of saying oh my god i can't believe that happened i'm destroyed uh, i'm so you know remorseful no 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 her reaction is but he always treated me badly he calls me everything except for this and that he does this that's why i did it so there's a reason why i did it and that is not going to go well with the jury that does not look good for sarah so bad move on sarah uh rejecting the speed deal i believe that she would still have time uh to accept it and if i was her God forbid, I would be running to the prosecutors before they pull this deal out of the table because the alternative is bad. It's life in prison and it's a minimum of 25 years, I believe. 22.5 was one of the, the punishments I heard, but absolutely bad, bad decision. So please let me know what you guys think about Sarah's decision why do you think she rejected the plea deal what do you think goes on in her mind why do you think she rejected so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys next time